Microsoft finally took off the wraps of the Surface Pro 8, the Surface Duo 2, and its new crazy Surface laptop. Let's talk about it. Hi, welcome to Z Gadget Review. Microsoft today held their Microsoft Surface event. And in this event, they announced all the products we were expecting, plus one small surprise, if we can call it that. It was a surprise because it was something unexpected. So I'm going to start with the uh, Surface Go, which was one of the announcements, and I'm going to end up with the Surface Duo 2. So if you're looking for that uh, portion of the video, that will be towards the end of the video. But I will encourage you and ask you to just watch the whole thing. So the Surface Go. The Surface Go, if you are not familiar with the device, this will be the third year that they are coming up with a refresh of the line. The Surface Go, I will say, is akin to what the iPad Mini is in a way. The iPad Mini seems a lot more powerful than the Surface Go, but it's technically what Microsoft is trying to go for. The Surface Go uses Intel's mobile processor, so it's a lower uh, power processor, but it's supposed to be able to do the basic tasks that you needed to do in the demonstration. They focus mostly on how it will run Windows 11, and it seems that this will be a tablet that will be geared towards children. It's at least the way that they're marketing this tablet. There isn't a huge difference in design between last year's, or I guess not last year's, but the Surface Go 2 and the Surface Go 3 except for the internals. It's going to have a more powerful mobile chip from Intel inside. The Surface Go starts at $399.99, so $400, and it will be available on October 5th. It's available for pre-order right now. Now let's move on to the Surface Pro 8. The Surface Pro 8 actually has a more of a bump compared to its predecessor. It's going to be more powerful. It's going to be an overall better experience than previous Surface Pros. Let's start with a big change. So the Surface uh, Pro is going to be 13 inches, which means that it's going to be 11% larger than the Surface Pro 7. It's going to be 12.5% brighter than before with an 11% higher resolution. All this, of course, according to Microsoft. The display also, for the first time, will support Dolby Vision and adaptive color technology, meaning that the color of the screen will change depending on the lighting on the room. The other huge bump on the Surface Pro 8 is that the screen is going to support up to 120 hertz refresh rates. This isn't going to be 120 hertz refresh rates all the time. Is going to do kind of what Apple is doing with their ProMotion display, where the display will go up to 120 hertz, depending on what you're doing on the device. And 120 hertz more, most likely will be used when you're using the slim pen to draw or write or do anything in the screen in order to give you that quick response when you're drawing or doing whatever you're doing with a slim pen. The default is going to be 60 hertz. Again, I wish that these companies will allow us to have unlock 120 hertz if we want to have the display around 120 hertz all the time. I understand that they do it mostly for um, battery purposes because if your screen refreshes at 120 hertz all the time, then your battery is going to drain faster than if you have it at a lower rate. So I understand why they're doing it, but again, we are buying a device. Let us be responsible or decide how we want our device to run. You, of course, can purchase a detachable keyboard separately, which is going to have that little pocket for the Surface Slim Pen 2, which can go in, in the little pocket of the keyboard. And also, it can keep it charge for you so you don't have to worry about it being attached on the sides of the device hello apple the device will lose that usb a port they used to have and instead it's going to come with two thunderbolt four ports usb c ports it's also going to include the regular surface connect port for charging and accessories the front facing camera is going to be five megapixels 1080p 
in the back camera is going to be 10 megapixels and support up to 4K resolution video. The device will be available on October 5th. You can pre-order starting today. The uh, Surface Pro 8 will start at $1,099.99. And that is going to be for the Intel Core i5, 8 gigabits of RAM, 128 gigs of uh, SSD storage. Now you can go up to, as you can see here, the Intel Core i7, 32 gigs of RAM, one terabyte, and that's going to be $2,600. Microsoft also announced that they're making a new mouse and it's going to be made out of 20% recycled plastics. And these are plastics that are actually coming from the ocean. So it's actually called the Ocean Plastic Mouse. I'm sure you've probably seen videos or heard about or read somewhere, but they are mini robots nowadays in the ocean picking up as, as much trash as they can and they're recycling the plastic and creating little plastic pellets that are being used to manufacture products. And so one of the things that uh, some companies are doing is uh, sunglasses and, you know, anything that you can think of that can be made out of plastic. Microsoft has decided to use that ocean plastic to make a mouse. And it's a good idea. It looks like a basic type mouse. Obviously the selling point here is that you're helping the planet or at least 20% made out of recyclable elements, including the packaging. The packaging is also made out of recycled elements. Now, if you're interested in on purchasing this uh, mouse made out of uh, recycled ocean plastic, it's going to be $25 and it's going to be available on October 5th. It's not a bad purchase if you want to contribute to helping the environment. That surprise, the thing that they announced at the very end, but I'm not talking about it at the very end, is the Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. Yeah, that's the name. It's a long name. Microsoft Surface Laptop Studio. And so the reason why it's being called this is because Microsoft does have a Surface laptop that they have come up before. They also have a, a studio all-in-one PC that you can use for uh, content creation. This kind of combines both into one device. So this is a two-in-one device. You're going to have a laptop that then technically has converts into three different things. So you have the laptop, which you can pull the screen out instead of having a kickstand. You can put it in what they call show mode, and that will cover the actual keyboard and leave you the trackpad for the mouse to use. And this is supposed to be used uh, for watching movies and things like that. And then finally, you can make it all the way flat and turn it into a tablet sort of thing. And that's a form factor that they're calling a studio. The cool thing is that you can purchase the Surface Slim Pen 2 and also has a spot to hide under that screen. So when you put it on studio form, you can pull out that pen and you can go ahead and go to town and start drawing things and you know doing uh, picture editing and things like that. So the device is going to be 14.4 inches touchscreen, 3-2 aspect ratio, 2400 by 1600 pixels, 201 PPI. It can reach up to 120 hertz refresh rates. Again, this is going to be one of those uh, variable refresh rates and most likely will be when you're using the paint that it hits 120 hertz refresh rates. It, of course, is going to work with Windows Hello. All the other devices that I just mentioned will also work with Windows Hello. I forgot to mention that, but I think it's kind of obvious that are going to work with Windows Hello and Windows 11, just so you know. It's going to have two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports, the Surface connector, a headphone jack, but no SD card slot. And that's another issue when you have a device that you're using for content creation you most likely use an SD card. If you're doing video, most likely use some sort of SD card or uh, you know USB memory. So it has some shortcomings. And I think when they refer to a studio for uh, content creation, I think, they're, I think they're talking more about photo editing and drawing and painting more than video. Even though they showed in their demo a little bit of uh, video um, editing, magic there on the device but uh yeah i don't think i don't think this is going to be 100 percent for video editor if this is what you were thinking of which is what i thought of when i first saw it i was like oh that's so cool 
but I don't think that 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 specs lend itself to that. The device is going to be available on October 5th, starts at $1,600. So the reason why I say that this isn't necessarily suited for content creation, even though that's kind of what they're trying to push, is because the Intel Core i5 model gives you the Intel Iris X graphics. So it's uh, integrated graphics by Intel. If you want a different graphics chip, an NVIDIA graphics chip, then you have to go with the Intel Core i7 model. And that even only gives you 3050 Ti. So we're talking that if you're going to spend $2,100 in order to get the Core i7, then you can actually find in the market right now laptops that are around the same price, $2,100, $2,200, that are actually going to give you a 3070 and not a Ti, but an actual 3070 graphics card, which is going to be better for content creation and it's going to be better for gaming as well. So as cool as this device might look, I don't think that Microsoft is really positioning it, positioning the device for people that are looking for a, uh, let's say, gaming laptop or content creation laptop. Because like I said, there's other devices around the same price that offer better specs than this. Now let's move on to the big announcement, at least for me, the Surface Duo 2, Microsoft's second smartphone device, foldable phone device. Now this phone actually has a lot of improvements over the first device that actually make it a contender against other devices. Up to certain point though, because there is some very disappointing news about this that I will get to in a minute. Let's go over the changes on the device. It's exactly what the leak was. We're going to have a black and white, which is called graphite and glazer colors. It's going to be 5G NFC. It is going to have a three camera array on the back. So we're going to have a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, a 12 megapixel wide lens, and a 16 megapixel ultra wide camera with optical image stabilization. Also going to have night mode, portrait mode, and it can record 4K up to 60 frames per second. The new phone is also going to support the Slim Pen 2, which you can actually attach on the side of the phone magnetically so you don't lose it and you always know where it is. The screens have gotten a little bit bigger. They're going to be 5.8 inches. Each AMOLED displays that's bigger as well than the first Surface Duo. The phone, once it's open completely, it's going to measure 8.3 inches and the display resolution is going to be 1892 by 1344. It is going to have the new Gorilla Glass Victus. It would also include Snapdragon 888 processor, which is great. One of the coolest changes that they've made to the phone is that the screen that meets the hinge, if you can see here where the hinge is, where the two screens meet, they've gone ahead and made that screens curve. And the reason for that is one, to eliminate that big line in the middle to make it look more seamless. And the other reason is because when you have the phone closed, they're going to use that side screen for different things. One is going to be able to look at your notifications at a glance. So you'll be able to tell how many missed calls you might have, how many messages you may have. You won't be able to read them. You won't be able to open them through that because it's not a big screen space, but it's at least enough where you're not forced to open the device every time you have to take a look at your notifications. The other thing that you can do with that is you'll be able to tell how much battery you have. As you can see here, they'll show you a little green bar there to show you how much battery you have. One of the other biggest selling points from Microsoft for the device, one is that you obviously you can use xCloud or Game Pass cloud service to play on the device. And because you have both screens, you can literally use one screen as a controller while you have the other screen completely dis displaying the game. They also say that they have partnered with game developers and they have 150 games that are optimized to use both screens. Microsoft is asking for $1,500 starting price for this device. That gets you 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage. If you want to go all the way to 512 gigs of storage, same RAM, it's going to be $1,800. That is crazy expensive for a device 
that when it first came out, wasn't that popular. A lot of uh, reviewers did not recommend the device. The second one seems like a better step towards the future. But if you compare this to, let's say, the Samsung Fold 3, which is around the same price. You can find it for $1,500, $1,400 with discounts. Regular price, I know it's $1,800. You can make the argument that it's not a competitive price compared to Samsung. And there are some differences. One, Samsung starts at 256 gigs for that price. The screens are also better. 120 hertz refresh rates on Samsung, 90 hertz refresh rates on the Surface Duo 2. So there are some things there that are kind of like, uh, if you came in at like $1,200, even $1,300, you know, people are probably more willing to buy this device because the other thing is you still have that gap. You still have that line between the screens when you open and close the phone. Yes, the Galaxy Z Fold has a crease in the middle that is pretty noticeable, but you still technically have a full screen display. So that's another shortcoming on the device. That is uh, my biggest concern when it comes to the Surface Duo 2, the price. I think they got priced a little too high. Hopefully they'll offer some discounts or something that you can make the price lower because I do think that this phone of $1,200, $1,300 will have been a great device to compete against Samsung and whatever Google is coming with, because that, that rumors are that Google actually is going to launch a foldable phone before the end of the year. So if they do and they price their device below this, then you know, it's game over for the Microsoft Surface Duo 2. I don't know what they were thinking when they were uh, trying to figure out pricing, but I think that pricing is a misstep on their part. What do you think about this slew of products from Microsoft? Do any of these uh, laptops, tablets pick your interest? Are you a Surface person? And if you are, would you be buying the new version of the old devices? What do you think about the Surface Duo 2? Do you think that this is a big mistake that they made by not having a lower price on the device? Or do you think it's priced correctly what the market get supports or whatever it is that people say when they price things really expensive? What the market bears, that's what it is, when the, what the market bears. Let me know in the comment section. That's it for me. Go ahead and subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. Go ahead and hit that bell so you can be alerted every time we have new videos. And thank you very much for watching.